Ebos Fox here. Welcome back to my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course. In this video, it's everything multi streaming and dual output here in Streamlabs desktop. We're running with the Sakura Blade theme that we picked out in an earlier episode, and we are going to be setting up a multi stream as well as a vertical canvas to multi stream as well. This tutorial course is sponsored by Streamlabs. Thank you to them for sponsoring this course and allowing me to finally get this out here to you all. Thank you for your response on the previous videos so far. I have the whole playlist linked in the description. First, I want to talk about multi-streaming. If you're new to streaming and don't know what multi-streaming, or you may have heard the term simulcasting is, is it is streaming your, your, your feed, your live stream, your video feed to multiple websites at a time. Uh, traditionally, this would be like Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So you can build up your YouTube channel and reach Twitch's audience. YouTube has a bit more long tail on your stream video streams and videos, whereas Twitch is all about the here and now. But you can also stream to TikTok in the vertical format or the horizontal format. They got some weird stuff going on over there. If you like the TikTok kind of thing, Instagram has live streaming now. Trovo, you can sort of stream to Twitter. Facebook gaming is there. You have some options available to you. And so the goal is to stream to multiple of these websites at the same time so that you can reach as many people as possible. So you can find new audiences on each platform without having to make bespoke content for each one because realistically a live stream is a live stream whether you're on twitch or youtube or whatever being able to reach everyone as possible to be where your audience is whether they're on one platform or the other is a pretty big deal and it allows you to avoid keeping all of your eggs in one basket something could happen to your youtube channel or to your twitch channel and being completely unable to access any of your existing viewers kind of a problem being able to cross pollinate between the platforms means you get to get the best of all of them and hopefully start monetizing on each of them along the way that will allow you to put yourself in the best position for success or reaching the most people or having the most fun so that is what multi-streaming is there is some considerations with it with regards to the the technical side of things because you are pushing more streams to more places than you would traditionally be going to Twitch or going to YouTube on its own. Each of those new places could end up, not guaranteed, there are some options to work around it, but can end up being a wholly new stream encode that your hardware then has to handle and your internet connection has to be able to support it. If you have an internet connection that say caps out at like 10 megabits per second and you can barely, you know, you can sustain a Twitch stream at say six or seven megs, you can't really afford to do another one of those also sent over to YouTube or a second one sent over to, to TikTok or anything like that. So you really have to keep an eye out for your internet speed. You're going to be scaling. Think about at minimum doubling your bandwidth for multi-streaming. You can actually go higher because, for, for example, YouTube supports higher bit rates than Twitch does. But by de uh, at a minimum, you're going to be doubling your bandwidth output. And your hardware is going to be responsible for encoding more sessions. Now, this is what you would be dealing with in a traditional multi-stream setup with other software. With Streamlabs Desktop, this is not an issue. I don't know if I made that clear enough in my original explanation. In normal multi-stream scenarios, your computer is responsible for every single one of these outputs. To render, to encode, and then to upload through your internet connection. So, YouTube... Twitch, Trovo, whatever, are all separate streams your internet is having to deal with at the same time. With Streamlabs Desktop, Streamlabs has their own multi-streaming service running on their own servers where you send one feed. When you click go live down here, you are sending one single stream. You are rendering it, encoding it, and upload one single stream through your internet connection to Streamlabs, who is then splitting up, formatting, and sending over all the different copies for whatever additional outputs you select and click go live on, so that you're not responsible for any of that. This is great if you don't have the best internet, if you don't have the best computer, or you don't have all of the technical know-how, especially with the, the software, the layout setup I'm about to show you, but it's also just great to not have to deal with the hassle. You don't have to deal with the uptime, any of the other issues, because it can be a lot, even on like fiber internet, to send out multiple streams at a time, because it's just taxing on everything. This handles it all for you. So let's go ahead and set this up here in Streamlabs Desktop. We have, like I said, we already have a pre-made layout we chose earlier. This is one of the Streamlabs Ultra ones. And to get set up with multi-streaming, we first need to connect some streaming outputs. So I'm gonna go over here to Settings, over on the left, and under Stream, we have connected our Streamlabs accounts and you can start connecting other output accounts. So we've got Trovo, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Kick, TikTok, 
and Twitter, as well as you can add custom RTMP outputs as well. If you say are working in a corporate environment or educational or something and want to or just your own custom website, you have the option for things that aren't just natively integrated here. You can see here I've already signed in with my Trovo, my Twitch, my YouTube, and we can run all of those as we wish. So then we come over here in the output settings, and this is where you would manage your stream settings. I have a whole video dedicated to that if you're interested, linked in the video description. It was one of the earlier episodes in the course. But over here in multi-streaming, we now have the option to customize where you go live when you hit go live. Now it does tell you you want to confirm your stream names and things like that before you go live. Right there, first option. Helps if I read. So that will mean when you hit go live, it's going to ask you to prompt. It's going to prompt you to ask you to change your stream title, your game selection, your category, those kinds of things before you go live, just to make sure that you're doing it right, because you don't have all of those options always built in right in front of you here. So by default, we can just multi-stream right away. We've signed in with our accounts. We can do this. Uh, obviously, your settings will need to match in your output settings. will need to match what your platform can support. So for example, right now, if you're not in the Twitch enhanced beta, you are limited to H.264 for Twitch. So we have NVIDIA NVENC H.264 available to us right here. We will just use it. Bitrate settings, blah, blah, blah. But if we hit go live, it's going to pop up and ask us which channels we want to go live to, which destinations that we have already set up. So but defaulted to Twitch here, we have a category. We have a title. You can set up tags, content classification if you have any adult things you need to block out, whether it's sponsored or not. You can actually choose to use enhanced broadcasting here within the multi-stream, which is wild. But again, if you don't know what Twitch enhanced broadcasting is, I have videos on that as well linked in the description. I will link. You are encoding the entire transcoding ladder of like, say, 1080p, 720p, 480p, 144p, th those kinds of things. So that will already increase your encoding performance requirements here. So then multi-streaming on top of that will be too difficult for some people's computers. On the highest end of graphics cards and configurations, you'll be okay. But on the lower to medium end, you're going to run into trouble with this. But from there, we can confirm and we can go live. And then we can also enable a YouTube stream as well. And if we come here, here with YouTube, we if we click the additional settings option, we can then come down here and choose whether we have an existing stream event. If we have made one, we can select it. Otherwise, we will be making a new event. Your privacy, which for, for most of you, you want it to be public. For me, I'm actually going to go unlisted so that you all don't see it. You can choose your category. You can add a thumbnail because YouTube streams benefit from having a YouTube thumbnail. And then your latency settings. So we could go low latency since we're just in HD here. All the usual YouTube settings are available right here as well. And if you linked up your Twitter account, you can actually tweet out your stream, which is rad. Over here on the left, you can control what your primary chat for the chat widget that will pop up will be, whether it's Twitch or YouTube, which is pretty neat. You'll be able to see both. And you have an option down here to record your stream alongside going live. I love this window. This is my favorite window in all of multi-streaming software. I, I, I am saying this now because it makes things so easy. We're actually going to close this. Because if I have a setup here, instead of having an extra panel I have to juggle when I'm not doing anything, whatever, I'm just like, all right, I am here. I am ready to stream. I'm going to click go live. Then I get to pick where I go live to, whether I'm recording or not, and all of the settings for that stream. I cannot spell. Ready to go. All right here. One thing I'm going to do before I do this. I am actually going to link my test switch account. Oh, I can't do that because I am signed into Streamlabs desktop with that account. All right. Apologies to those of you who follow me on Twitch. You're getting a kind of spammy notification here because we are going to be going live for only a moment and then shutting it back down. All right. But yeah, I, I love this window because I don't have to make any decisions when I'm not ready. When I am ready to go live, I click this button. This pops up. I can change all of my settings per platform. Additional settings allows you to pull up your other platform settings. I can choose which platform I'm going to, whether I want to record a VOD of the stream or not. And then I can confirm and go live. Here, it's going to update all of our settings for Twitch. It's going to make our event for YouTube. It's going to set up the multi-stream service. And it's going to start streaming the video. 
and boom, just like that, we are now live on Twitch. We are live on YouTube. If we pull up Task Manager, we can take a look at the bandwidth that we are using here. About seven megabits per second. That's about it. We're live. We can go ahead and pull up our other platforms. So I pull up Twitch. We are indeed live on Twitch here just for a moment. Apologies again to those of you who are showing up because I'm about to shut it down. And if I go to my YouTube settings, you can see here we have an unlisted stream that is currently live as well with us. And we can we can tune in and watch that and see that it is, in fact, live. We have our Twitch chat here, our YouTube chat, everything going. So I'm going to end the stream and really upset people who just got the notification. I am sorry. So that's fine for your traditional multi-stream. That's great. Super easy, easy workflow, ready to go. But you also have the option of including... <laughs> Someone popped up in chat. Uh, you do have the option of doing a separate vertical stream format for vertical platforms like Instagram and TikTok. So we go back over here into our settings and go to stream. You can sign in with one of those. I don't currently have access to streaming on TikTok because TikTok's rules are really kind of silly, but we can sign in with it anyway. So let's go ahead and associate here. TikTok merge. Let's get signed in. Link our TikTok account. Question mark. Addy? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> now, under our video settings, where we set our resolutions and our frame rates that I covered in the prior episode, we can choose to enable dual output. Now, this gives us a whole second canvas that is in vertical. So now we have separate horizontal and vertical resolution and frame rate choices here. So we have 1920 by 1080 and 1080 by 1920. So we got two different canvases. And you can see here, by default, the vertical one kind of freaks out. Do not freak out. If you remember from our earlier episode, a lot of these Streamlabs layouts came with vertical modes. We just need to align the vertical specific elements on the vertical canvas while leaving alone the horizontal ones. Now over here, next to our scene collection with all of our scenes, you can actually hide the vertical or horizontal preview, which is pretty neat. You also have the option to disable dual output right here next to sources as well. So now we need to manipulate our canvas here kind of get this going because we do you will see here there are a couple copies of the sources provided by this theme that are called dual at the end and that is for the vertical version so next to each given source you have new icons for hiding or showing in the vertical scene so we need to go to the ones that are vertical and put them above the horizontal ones because we have hidden the vertical ones from the horizontal view and then we can start manipulating where these sources go on our canvas. So we could still put the magic eight ball. Maybe we make it a lot smaller in the corner of our chat here. We take our sub goal, line that up there. We got some social media icons. Those are all sorts of messed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our dual sources and just drag them up above basically everything. We'll put magic eight ball and sub goal back on top of those, and then we'll find our webcam, which is right here, and it is way too big for a vertical canvas, so we just shrink it down. And boom, now we have a vertical version of our canvas that perfectly matches the horizontal one using dual output. You can click manage dual output here to change those settings again if you'd like, and then under streaming, when we go live, so I'll go ahead and click go live here. Now, for a given platform, you get to choose whether you're sending vertical to that platform, horizontal to that platform, or currently, in the case of YouTube, you can choose both. And it will send a new event for the vertical and for the horizontal stream to send both to YouTube at the same time, which is really freaking cool. And I would imagine, given the recent Twitch announcements, that they have multi-canvas stuff coming soon, that that option will be available for Twitch in the future as well. This gives you the ultimate power for multi-streaming to any platform. Now, I do want to note, I am using Streamlabs Ultra here. If you do not have Streamlabs Ultra, you get one platform as well as the vertical platform, a single, like say TikTok, for free with dual output. With Streamlabs Ultra, you can scale this to as many outputs as you would like. So that is something to consider. You get... TikTok plus one extra for free with dual output 
And if you have, wow, they include a button to apply to TikTok streaming right here. That's that's pretty neat. But if you have Streamlab Ultra, you have basically the ultimate power to multi-stream everywhere because you get your horizontal canvases duplicated to whatever platforms you want on the settings you want. And then you get the dual output, which is set up to basically perfectly match your horizontal canvas fed out to vertical platforms as well. It's pretty freaking sick. If you're curious about how to set any of the rest of this up, I do have a tutorial course in the description for the rest of Streamlabs desktop and even the Streamlabs plugin for OBS. If you're interested in that, check that link out in the description. And in the next episode, we'll be covering charity streams with Streamlabs Charity. So stay tuned for that. Remember to be kind. Rewind. Thank <laughs> you.